All right. Hey, good morning, church family. Uh, we are so great, f- grateful for you uh, being here today. So thankful to have our missionaries, our ministry and church partners. Uh, it is great to see you. Uh, I want to take just a moment and share with you, uh, over the last several years, there have been incidents where I or our trustees, maybe our directional team or others have felt like it would be appropriate and responsible for our church to have me make a public proclamation regarding a certain situation. You know, one of my many roles of being the pastor of South Tampa Fellowship is to shepherd through ethical issues by providing biblical guidance. And when called upon, uh, if we feel like it is urgent enough and the necessity calls for it to formally address you as our church family regarding a specific concern. This is one of those moments. On November the 5th of this year, most of us will be heading to the polling place with important decisions before us, including who's going to become the 47th president of the United States. However, an extremely serious and severe amendment has been placed on the November 2024 Florida ballot that seeks to erase pro-life protections and inserting language into the Florida Constitution prohibiting regulation of abortion. It is called Amendment 4, the amendment to limit government interference with abortion, which is also known as the Right to Abortion Initiative. I want to make sure that we're very clear today. This is neither a partisan, that is red or blue, right or left issue, nor is this a political issue. It is every Christian's obligation. But in reality... In actuality, it's an issue for everyone concerned with the life or death of a human being made in God's image. Amendment 4, if passed, would allow for late-term abortions, including when the baby is capable of feeling pain, and would eliminate laws requiring parental consent and safety protocols for women. So as a pastor, I, I would even say as a follower of Christ along with you and working with many others, including many of our ministry partners, that we are working hard to oppose this dangerous and deceptive amendment. And so we are urging you to prayerfully consider to vote no on Amendment 4. I want you to know that I am in 100% agreement with Tampa's own and Super Bowl winning coach Tony Dungy, who just this week posted to X the following statement, and I quote, Florida's Amendment 4 is written with vague and deceptive terms. All Florida voters need to make sure you've read it very carefully. I urge you, Florida friends, to vote no and to do the research. This bill will drastically change the abortion landscape in Florida if it passes, end quote. So I would say to you that this devastating and dangerous amendment, that it seeks to add language to our state constitution that would jeopardize the sanctity of human life and would undermine our duty to protect the unborn. And just to be simply honest with you today, it is wrong. And wrong for several reasons. This amendment is absolutely and completely opposed to the very basic biblical concept regarding the creation of life. The Bible establishes that human life was created by God and is sacred to Him. Every unborn child is a person bearing the image of God from the very instant of conception. Now, with the same breath, let me say that we should seek to comfort, care, and pray for those facing difficult decisions in this life. 
and to bring the hope of the gospel, the kindness and forgiveness available in Christ Jesus to those who have had or have encouraged others to have an abortion. STF family, I urge you, out of love for the Lord and his word, for the sake of millions of unborn lives, to vote no on Amendment 4. Although this is a critically serious matter, we should not be discouraged. Psalm 121 says this, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. And I, again, want to say to our ministry and missionary and church partners, thank you. Uh, many of you, one more child and, and uh, a new life solutions, and, and so many of you represent exactly what I spoke about today. And uh, many of you are on the front lines of this issue, and so we want to applaud you. We thank you for your courage. We thank you for your commitment to life. And many of you serve those in every aspect of life. And so we appreciate you taking the gospel, lifting up the name of Jesus. And as a church family, uh, we want to tell you we love you. We appreciate you. We champion you. We are with you. And we want to spend a moment praying over you. So church family. Uh, if we could do uh, a big favor to me and to uh, our friends, can we just give them a big round of applause? Would you remain standing for a word of prayer? If you feel comfortable, just in a, 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 um, an attitude of support, uh, a symbol, if you would, uh, would, would you just, in agreement, reach out your hand towards these missionaries as we pray a blessing over them? Our Father in heaven, Lord, we know that you are truly the maker of the heavens and the earth. God, that you are the one that has created life by breathing breath into us. And so, Lord, it is with that breath that we worship you, that we praise you, that we bring glory to your name. Father, there is no one else who is worthy of our weight, of our importance, of our beauty than you. And Father, standing before me and before our church family are our partners, those that we love, those that we care for, those that we uh, financially support, we prayerfully support. God, we are, are able to engage with many of them in the work that they are doing. And Lord, we pray that they would not grow weary in doing good. Lord, we pray that they would be strengthened in their relationship with you, that even today they would be encouraged and exalted, inspired in the work in which they are doing, and that many would join their task and would partner alongside of them. God, I pray today that, Lord, they feel seen, that the work in which they are doing, where sometimes they may be the only one, that they would know that they're not alone, that they have a family that loves them and cares for them. And Lord, we pray your blessing and your favor upon their ministry. Lord, we ask that you would allow them to be fruitful, to multiply as they continue to reach this city and others for your glory, for your namesake. And so, Lord, would you use them to build up your kingdom, to allow your word to spread. Lord, we love them. We're so grateful for our friendships with them. And so, Father, even on this weekend, that they would feel refreshed Lord, ready to go back and to continue the work in which you've called them to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.